Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to G4G on Overwatch. Today, <laughs> G4G on Overwatch. G4G on YouTube. Today, we are in Overwatch. It is a game that I haven't covered on the channel for quite some time, but I finally feel that there is a need to go ahead and talk about some of what is going on in Overwatch. So we are currently in the Overwatch 2 beta. As you might be able to tell from the fact that I am playing the Junker Queen, who does not exist in Overwatch. And Overwatch 2 is only in beta mode. So, let's go ahead and talk about some of the changes that are going on for Overwatch 2. And we're also going to talk about the Junker Queen and her kit, which is what I'm going to do right now. So, Junker Queen has a pump action shotgun which holds six pieces of ammunition in it. It does not reload like a standard shotgun where you have to load all the shells in. If you burn out your ammo, you are essentially reloading a canister that kind of looks like a fire extinguisher. It is that red thing over here that says kill on it and no matter how many shots you shoot the reload will always be exactly the same because it's loading an entire canister so aside from her pump action shotgun she has a knife in her left hand that you could see here if you were to do a right click you throw the knife and it does damage over time it sounds like it's sort of like a shock damage. It's basically a bleed. When you right click again, you reactivate and it returns to your hand, sort of like Thor with Mjolnir. Her first ability is Commanding Shout, which is ripped directly from World of Warcraft. Warriors have it. Uh, there is a small difference though, that in this particular game, you increase your health by 200 allies health goes up by 100 but there is a movement speed increase that is what is a little bit different from world of warcraft where it is just a uh, health boost she has another ability called carnage where she pulls out a hammer and wounds everybody in front of her it is again kind of a bleed she has a passive called adrenaline rush where she will heal from all damage over time dealt by wounds so she is sort of a reasonable counter to herself and she fulfills the tank role. So one of the things that I wanted to uh, bring up since we said uh, tank role, one of the things that I wanted to bring up is that I feel that with Overwatch 2 going to only one tank when you are doing standard play and competitive play i feel like that is a bit of a pain in the ass the in overwatch one a standard match consists of two tanks two heals two dps two 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 uh of course in competitive play it had uh changed up over the years where it um was any variety of roles and everything there was goats there was dive there was all these different compositions with goats living the longest and goats being the one that was probably the most boring and dive was the most exciting so blizzard tried a lot of things to get rid of the goats comp and some nerfs to tanks had happened during that time now with overwatch 2 you have tanks on the left side of the screen you have dps in the center and you have heals on the right so let's talk about tanks since that's what junker queen is reinhardt maintains his shield as does sigma and winston diva of course has her barrier that absorbs doomfist move over to the tanking role we have junker queen we have ball uh, aka wrecking ball we have uh, zarya and we have roadhog now orissa is still around but orissa lost that deployable shield that she put up so 
really the tanks are kind of divided into shield tanks, which are Sigma, Winston, Reinhardt, and I'd say three quarters with D.Va, and the bruiser tanks, which would be like Doomfist, Junker Queen, Roadhog, Ball, Zarya, etc. Zarya sort of is a weird middle ground in which she does have some shielding, uh, but she is also capable of high DPS if she's got everything going right with high energy. So she does come across as a little bit of a bruiser. Uh, Junker Queen also is capable of producing some very good DPS. And at times I've seen her keep up with regular DPS and quick play. My issue is, is that I feel when you are knocking things down to just one tank, I think there are certain comps and certain choke points that become really, really tough to get through unless you have a shield tank. And when you're doing things like quick play where people aren't necessarily going to listen or do the things the team wants, then I think you're going to be in for a bad time, say, going up against a trash gin, uh, entrenched very well and supported very well on defense, and you're running around with a Junker Queen or just simply a Roadhog or a Doomfist, for example. Now, when I had this conversation with my girlfriend earlier in the week, she pointed out that even though that, yes, there are less shield tanks, the other tanks are capable of disrupting. And I do know there are certain uh, compositions like Zenyatta and Hanzo that can take care of entrenched trash gins and things like that by basically boosting the damage and then having Hanzo do the one shot. But I still feel that Blizzard might be in for a little bit of trouble competitively by just having the one tank. I feel that it would be better if perhaps they could have two categories of tanks and they could have the bruiser category and the shield category and limit bring it back to two tanks but limit it to one shield character like sigma winston or reinhardt and then have one tank in the other category which would basically be bruisers i don't necessarily know that a roadhog or a junker queen alone is just really going to be able to get it done but let's talk about junker queen's abilities and you guys can figure it out yourself if you think that she would be viable as a single tank admittedly when i fight against junker queens i feel that she's quite obnoxious but i don't honestly think she can get it done I had a lower opinion of her before I actually loaded in to practice with her, and now that I've practiced with her, I do see how she works, and I will say she is fun. I just don't know if she can be a solo tank. So, we do know that her knife over here has a active ability by throwing it, and it either times out naturally and comes back to you, or you can throw it and pull it back it's very very similar to the roadhog hook except if you are far enough away you do not pull all the way to you unlike say roadhog so i did land it and when i pull it back it only comes but so far roadhog will always pull to himself the target always comes and ends at himself provided there is no line of sight issues or anything. So, she has a great little combo of throw, recall, knife, gun. Now, I actually, I can, with these training bots, throw, recall, and just shoot a crit and actually do uh, basically three clicks. Throw, retrieve, crit. But there is a Roadhog styled combo of throw, retrieve, melee, crit. Uh, that is a good way to get down higher targets that aren't going to just die to the knife, retrieve, and crit. The good thing about it is that when you melee, 
if you melee and then hit your primary fire right after it, what happens is when the gun comes up to the ready position and is uh, aiming straight ahead, it fires. Even if you happen to do melee primary fire very quickly, it holds your click and shoots the shotgun at the first available moment that it can. So here's a regular click of melee, shotgun, melee, shotgun, melee, shotgun. Now watch what happens if I go ahead and melee and basically primary fire at the same time. That one's a little delayed. But what happens is the timing is a little bit better. It's a little bit quicker than if you were to visually wait for it to come up and then shoot. And you get a really, really fun cadence going on if you can land everything about it. So throw, retrieve, and stab, shoot. Also, it's a lot of bleed damage. So if you happen to bring somebody to you that is kind of quick and comes up to you and immediately starts going away like a tracer, you still can do quite a bit of damage. So throw, retrieve, that time I was actually a little below the crit spot. I, I kind of shot the Adam's apple, but throw, retrieve. It's it's really um, a quite fun combo. This is her commanding shout, and you can see that I went from 425 health to 625 for just a few seconds. Throw, retrieve. And what's really good is if you're in close, you can melee melee and switch targets and shoot at the same time so melee melee shoot and actually that that training bot would have ticked down uh it didn't need that extra so i i mean she's capable you can see that if she's behind uh enemies and they don't really know that she's there she can do a lot of damage. You can throw and just plow like that. Like a good Roadhog, definitely capable of a lot of damage. The thing is she has to be good with her distance. You don't want to be too far away because then you don't hit the combo. So if you move up towards your knife, as you're retrieving it, there you go. You make sure that you're hopefully going to be at the optimal distance. We'll wait until these guys respawn and there's me buffing them. I will say that her shotgun is absolutely pathetic at any kind of range whatsoever. The fall off is definitely pretty rough. And you can do neat tricks like this, like throw at this angle, retrieve at that angle, and then do damage in line. You can also do some fancy tricks like throwing at the ground. Well, let's see. Let's kill it. Let's do this. Throw it. And you can see that I hit the bot, and the bot is taking tick damage over there. You also can get double the bleed damage if they get hit by the throw and the melee. Double tick damage. Over here, let's take a look at her other ability. You can see she takes out a big hammer and she goes ahead and hammers everything in front of her. Now, with both of these being alive, I'm just going to wait for the cooldown over here, and you can see the size of her arc, and see how she'll hit both. So, if you can imagine comboing a lot of these abilities over here, throw, retrieve, that happens too sometimes. 
you retrieve somebody and they go behind you. Uh, I'm not really too sure what causes that yet, but I've definitely seen it happen. So throw, retrieve, stab. You can, again, if you get the good cadence going on over here, you kind of know when you can retrieve and begin to queue up the hammer slam because you are definitely going to get some fast characters like Tracer that will come up to you and be able to escape any kind of follow-ups if they're really on point and they get going. So you have to get the timing right of throwing and now retrieve hammer. See how just as it gets to me, the hammer goes ahead and hits. It's because you basically are retrieving and hammering within the same beat. It'd be kind of cool if the hammer had a little bit of a knockback so that um, you think it would so that if I was to stand here, come on bot, and do that, that I could um, have a little bit of a push factor to it, have a little bit of a knockback, but there is definitely a ton of knockback in the game already. Uh, let's see if we retrieve into space. Ah, looks like it is going to respect space and will not be like a roadhog hook where it will pull somebody um, out into space. Let's see if I can get somebody really close. Let's wait for the bot to come up. Yeah, that one, wow. That one on the comeback from the knife on the retrieval, the knife did not take any kind of a juggle whatsoever. Okay, I hit the wrong one. She's really annoying the fight against because there are definitely times where you get bumped and you don't even know what's bumping you because it comes from behind you. And you're just walking along and all of a sudden you're like, boop. And you're like, there's not a Lucio around. There's not a Pharah around. What just did that? And what's happening is that she's recalling her knife. And uh, she's causing a little bit of that retrieval when the knife comes back. Yeah. Interestingly enough, the bot is not moving at all. See if I can hit it on the landing. Oh, okay, so he cleared the space that time. So maybe you can bring uh, somebody out over ledges with this. Now, nah, now nah, the bot's scared. Come here, buddy. See. Yeah, it's tough to get the timing to just bring it on the retrieval. You may... Yeah, okay. I think what happens is you don't get the... You don't get the knockback unless you actually stick the throw. Stick the throw. Hmm. Yeah, didn't really move much on that. It's gonna be interesting to see if you can actually kill somebody into space similar to a uh the way that a roadhog would with the knife retrieval uh, a lot of the characters have had some changes and everything obviously doomfist has going from dps to a tank Arissa's dropped her shield some of her abilities have changed but they have also made graphical changes to characters that did not get any real updates when i fire Farah's rockets now they have um, a little bit of a interesting trail. So it is very easy to see a rocket when it's coming at you and also see where it came from because there is a little bit of a tracer situation going on over here because it has like a little bit of a comet tail. Junkrat also has the same thing. When you if you were to kind of slow this down and look at it in slow-mo, you would see that the balls have a little bit of a flame tail, like a, a comet tail going on. So again, 
it's easy to kind of get an idea where the junk rat might be just by watching um, the sort of tracer fire that's going on over there. This is Sojourn. This was the new hero in the first beta. She has a slide that you can combo into a jump. See, this is her normal jump. She doesn't have a double jump or a float jump like Echo or anything, but if you jump while sliding, you can go ahead and get a bit of a vertical boost. So slide, jump. So she has a primary fire that builds up a charge. And when it's at a hundred or actually even sooner, she can fire a rail shot. What's neat is you can certainly go ahead and land your shots on a character over there and then rail a character over there. If you can, you wanna definitely try to hit crits and charge up to 100 as your rail shot will be that much stronger when she does it. You are kind of a soldier slash Widowmaker combination if you're playing Sojourn. Really what it is, it's, it's in a lot of ways similar to playing Widowmaker, but having your um, alternate fire actually be reasonably powerful. Uh, Widowmaker's, when she's not landing her sniper shots, her, <laughs> her uh, alternate fire is, is kind of pathetic. Sort Sojourn is able to um, get the the hit scan rapid fire going quite a bit better than Widowmaker. She also has this lovely ability, which is one of my favorites. She throws out this little uh, dot ball that goes on. When it ticks down on somebody, they are also slightly slowed. Not nearly as bad as a May, but it kind of reminds me of the slow from Symmetra's turrets and everything like that. So what you can do is throw out the ball is basically start combat if you have a little bit of a charge going on for your gun build up a charge on something you ball so that it, it makes it hard for them to run away if they're a little bit slower you can go ahead and land your rail shots just a little bit easier now if you try to rail shot with no charge, nothing happens. But as you can see, you can even get just like a little bit rail shot, a little bit rail shot, a little bit rail shot. It all depends on how good your tracking is and how uh, reasonably accurate your firefight is. Trying to do that on a zipping around tracer might be a little bit tougher than if you're critting an Orisa in the head. Her ultimate basically allows her to charge her railgun shot automatically without having to land the primary fire. And it also pierces. So if you've got the ability to line up a shot like that, it's going to go ahead and go through everybody. It's pretty handy. Um, it is reason She is reasonably good as a hit scan against flyers. So I gotta say that between Cassidy and Echo and Soldier and Sojourn, I think Pharah's lives are going to be kinda tough in Overwatch 2. As of the first beta, Soldier was at a really good high point. Soldier was, um, even though he is kind of basic, and he is a character that fulfills a basic role in just about every game where there is a character like him. Oscar Mike in Battleborn was a primary example. They're just very first-timer friendly, very noob friendly, because they're not particularly complicated. He is in a very, very strong role right now. At least in the first Overwatch beta. I think he is still pretty strong right now in the second Overwatch beta. Sombra is also pretty strong because of some changes to her kit and the way that hacking works and everything like that. 
So Overwatch 2 is definitely going to be a lot of fun. I certainly think I'm going to be as addicted to it as I am now with Overwatch, with WoW kind of having run down quite a bit uh, with the guild on break until Dragonflight. I'm not in WoW nearly as much as I used to be. As a matter of fact, I could probably go an entire week without ever logging in at this point. But Overwatch and Overwatch 2, I almost have to play nightly. I kind of consider it a crappy night if I can't get into Overwatch the way the timing works out. But, yeah, still still fairly addicted to Overwatch, and I can see myself playing Overwatch 2 quite extensively. But I will say that thanks to the new scoreboard feature, which shows your kills and your deaths and your damage done and your healing done and everything i can say that i honestly feel like in overwatch 2 what is going to determine the outcome of a match or a quick play or anything like that it's always going to be the healer or the healers i should say um it is so very very rare that i have ever seen a winning team not out heal the losing team uh it, it it seems to be the biggest difference it doesn't really matter if the dps is that much better or if the tank is that much better or if it's a reinhardt that is just not charging into death all the time it just seems to be the healing numbers every loss that i've ever been part of always is something like the enemy healing team has 7k and 6k and my team has like a 6k and a 2 2k 3k something like that it always seems to be one healer out of the four that causes the loss i rarely ever see a match that's super tight and it's like 7k 7k versus 6.5k and 7k it, it it just always seems to be that some one of the healers on the server is slacking and then that is the one that usually winds up losing um it has been pointed out to me by the girlfriend that the major reason for that is because there is only one tank so the healers find themselves victimized by enemy dps that much more and that is why things like uh for zenyatta he was given a super kick that his melee is a is a big um das boot kick that knocks people back and that's how he actually survives now because of that fact that there is only um one tank instead of two but it, it just honestly feels like it's more than that it, it's very very rare that i have ever seen a loss that actually out heals the winning team and you may see you may say that seems ridiculously obvious but it is entirely possible to have better healing and still have a loss if the plays are that good or the dps is just that much better but we will certainly see i kind of feel like i'll be proven right eventually but who knows because i i mean i follow the competitive scene but i've not followed the competitive scene in a while i need to get back into it so if you're playing overwatch let me know what you think is this new footage for you for overwatch 2 did you get into the overwatch beta did you even apply what do you think of the new characters and do you think um the changes to overwatch may actually sway you into playing overwatch 2 if you are currently not an active overwatch player let me know down in the comments below and i will see you guys later have a good one